Hello, Algebra 2 students. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing well. I hope you're taking some time to get outside. Yesterday was a really pretty nice day. The last few days have been pretty nice. I, I hope you're getting outside um, and spending some time outside, just getting fresh air and things like that, kind of getting away from the house for a few minutes, but staying safe while you do it, of course. A couple of things I want to talk about. Number one, afternoon classes. I apologize. Somehow I accidentally had it in my head that I set for the posting and then I was looking through some things and I'm like, wait a minute, how come certain people haven't responded who usually respond? What's going on? And I looked and I realized that I missed that. So hopefully um, you are able to look through. And there was some homework posted yesterday and a video to watch. Um, they go hand in hand. Here's the deal. Usually the day after I teach that, I go through every like as many problems as people need me to go through because I know word problems can sometimes be a little bit tricky. Um, but if you listen to my video as you're kind of reading through the problems, they a lot of them match up. There's a few that are a little bit different. But rather than spend another video of just reading to you what it was and drawing the pictures for you, if you really want that, please line up a video chat with me sometime today. I will make sure every single one of your problems is right. Uh, but I'm not going to do that because we are getting ready for a test next week. We like, would like to do something next week before we kind of go on our two week long spring break. So thank you for telling me that right now it looks like there's not a lot of tests or things like that going on. If you hear of other ones today, you can let me know. Um, it's not like imperative that you do, but just let me know just in case. Um, I'm definitely not looking at it being Monday, uh, just so you guys know, I wouldn't do that anyway. Um, I kind of told you yesterday, thinking it'd probably be either like Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Tuesday, I suppose, could be a possibility, but I'm kind of thinking later towards the week. And just so you know, and I will try to send out an email or another alert or something like that, um, I think I might have certain times that you can kind of take it. Um, and like, there's, there's a time limit as to when you can take it and things like that just like if we were really in class I know you guys are at home and there's different things in different situations so I got to figure all of that out um, but you you might have to take it in a certain amount of time so just be prepared for that and tell me if that um, send me an email that's not your point for the day but if you really think having a set time like next Thursday at XYZ time you have to be on your computer doing your algebra 2 test please tell me if that appears to be too much of an issue Again, I just said Thursday at time XYZ. That does not mean the test is Thursday. Um, number two, guys, um, I've been noticing a lot of people who are just kind of copying each other, and I know it. Um, I know when you just copy. Um, it's not helpful for you. It's not going to be helpful for what we're doing. And so please, please, please just do your homework on your own. Like you're writing things down and you don't even know what you're writing. Like I'm trying to look for the answer and you can't, you can't even tell where your answer was. Like you're just scribbling whatever they wrote and you don't even know what you're writing and you don't know where the answer is. Please don't do that. Also, for those of you who are passing on your homework, maybe to just to try to help somebody out, they're not using it for help. They're just using it to copy and you're going to get docked for it. So don't do that. All right. So, um... I would like to, last night after you have your, had your diagrams drawn and everything like that, there would usually be two things that you knew, like the angle and a side, or two sides or something like that, and you had to find the other one. So just as a reminder, and because we are, are getting ready for the test, and everybody learns at a little bit of a different pace, I am going to pull this back again, and we are going to look through this. I think you can see all of them eventually if I move it over far enough. We have sine, cosine, and tangent, and we got to make sure where I, our hypotenuse is. So if you look at this drawing right here, I actually made it so that it's the flip of that one. But anytime you have one of these pictures, you can think about the drawing. And like if I needed to turn this paper backwards to help you out, we could maybe do that. So go across from the right angle. That's the hypotenuse. And then 36 degrees is the angle that is given. If we go across from that, whoops, my finger is covering it up. If we go across from that, that's opposite, and that's where X is. I'm not even going to write down the other word because it's blank and therefore not important, but this leg right here would be adjacent. So if you look behind me, I have opposite and adjacent, so Katoa tells me I'm going to use sine. So I would use sine, and my angle is 36. After sine, cosine, or tangent, I always write an angle, so that's why I wrote that 36 there. If I go opposite of it, it's X. 
if I go adjacent, um, excuse me, hypotenuse is 25.5. All right, guys. Our unknown is in the numerator. The known number is in the denominator. When you get something like this, please write this in your notes. If you get something like this, you will multiply to solve, okay? You will multiply this to solve. So you're going to multiply. You're going to take whatever's in the denominator and move it to the other side, which is our 25.5. And so our 25.5 is going to be multiplied by the sine of 36. So 25.5 times the sine of 36. My answer is telling me is 14.988. Also another thing, please listen to this. All sides are supposed to be rounded to a whole number. Uh, excuse me, to the tenths place. All degrees are to the whole number. So 14.98 would actually mean that we're going to round this to 15 because that 9, 8 would round up. But I should still probably put that squiggly equal sign and write approximately 15. Please notice, this is when x was in the numerator. When x was in the numerator, I multiply to solve. When x is in the numerator, I multiply to solve. Here's example number two for today. And guys, as we're reviewing, uh, I'm reviewing all these problems because they're probably going to be like problems A, that are on the homework for this weekend, and B, uh, eventually would show up on your test. So again, if we needed to, we could tilt this paper around and make it match up. Uh-oh, it looks like my hypotenuse is blank. Since my hypotenuse is blank, I already know that I'm going to be using tangent. But the one thing I have to be careful about is what is opposite and what is adjacent. So from 48, go across the circle. That's that 15, excuse me, across the triangle. And that's that 15.2. Go next to the 48, that's x. Oh yeah, and I've been saying 48. There's been a couple of you who have been putting the sides right after the tangent or sine or cosine. Please make sure that you put right after your trig function that you write your degrees if you have it. Now, same thing on this one. Would you please look right here? This is our last example. When x is in the numerator, you multiply to solve. When x is in the denominator, you're going to do that little switch and still divide. You're going to be dividing on this problem. So you're going to switch these two. You're going to switch those two right there and you're going to divide. So we're going to get x equals 15.2. That 15.2 never moves. That 15.2 never moves. And a couple times I've seen some people get a wrong answer on this. They have it written correctly, but they get the wrong answer. Please make sure you're careful about typing in what you have written down. Because again, some of you, I've had to write on your homework before. Your work looks good, but your answer is wrong. And so we get 13, but then it's a 0.68. Since it's an 8 next to the 6, that 6 would round up to a 7. And so I would get x equals 13.7. Ladies and gentlemen, in both of these, the x was on the side. On these two problems, x was one of the sides. So since x was one of the sides, I actually could type a number right next to tangent and right next to sine. So that means I actually got to use the real sine button on my calculator, the real tangent button on my calculator. This next example, if you notice, go ahead and pause so you get it. The question mark, the unknown, is an angle. Would you please write this down? When my unknown is an angle, when my unknown is an angle, I will use the inverse. When my unknown is an angle, I will use the inverse. When the unknown is an angle, I will use the inverse. So eventually, when we're working through on our calculators here, and I know it glares right there, but we're not going to use the regular sine, cosine, tangent button. We're going to use, on my calculator right now, it's yellow. 
So if you see those yellow things, that means I'm going to have to hit this yellow button first and then select whatever one when it says negative one right there. If you don't know how to do that, please let me know. I could either, again, do a video chat with you or I can like show you step for step and upload it as some pictures to a in an email to you. Um, and I'll make sure that you, it, there's no glare on it. Because right now when I hold it up, I know it gets blurry and there's a glare. And so I can do like step for step what you should see on your calculator. And if it's not a calculator that looks exactly like that, I can try and figure out what it is and, and tell you how to do it because I know about it. Um, quite a few different types of calculators. All right, so once again, if we move this around and kind of try to line it up, it looks like I do have the hypotenuse this time because that 22.5 is across from the right angle. So that's my hypotenuse. And guys, even though there's not a number here, I'm going to pretend question mark is the most important. So I'm going to go next to question mark. Next to question mark is adjacent adjacent. So I'm going to have to use my trig function that has adjacent and hypotenuse, which would be cosine. So over here on the side a little bit, I didn't leave myself maybe enough room. I'm going to write cosine of, and hey, if you don't know what it is, you could call it X, you could call it Y, you could call it A, you could call it question mark. Cosine of X equals adjacent listed first should be 13.7 divided by 22.5 and because I'm solving for the angle I should use the inverse but remember I gotta always write the inverse first the inverse on this side crosses out but since I did that there I need to write cosine inverse first and again be careful I've seen a few people who when they write cosine inverse when they're typing it on their calculator they accidentally don't hit cosine and so if you are gonna figure this out. We should get cosine inverse equals 13.7 divided by 22.5. And that would be 52.4, but since this is an angle, we're going to the whole degree. And so we would say X equals 52. X equals 52. So, that's all I have for today. Guys, um, some of you need to be much more orderly sometimes because there's like an A here and a B up here and your work is all over the place and I can't tell that. I'm not putting that on today's homework, but please just remember, if you can do this problem, this would change no bit at all if all of a sudden I would put a question mark here, but then I would white it out and up here put another red question mark. You could do the same work, but it would be a little, like instead of cosine, it would probably be opposite, so you would have to pick some. So you might have to do that work more than once, depending on that. But please make sure, do you see how like nice and orderly this work looks right here? Please make your work a little bit more nice and orderly because some of you are working all over the place and you don't even know what you're doing. Um, so just make sure your work is nice and clean and that you're doing it by yourself. Um, if you would please, um, all you have to do today is just email me and say, thanks Ms. Jabs, I watched the video. And by the way, Friday, if you want to give me a fist bump, you can say, uh, here's your fist bump. Uh, I miss seeing you guys in the hallway. I miss actually getting to talk to you and give you a fist bump for real. Um, so I hope you're doing well and staying healthy at home.